Let's start with our first lesson. This I'm calling it 1.0, and uh, we are basically reviewing functions in this lesson. Functions um, is covered in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 a lot. In fact, you guys have done a lot of functions, um, like a bunch of functions in uh, those two courses. So this is a quick review. Let's start with the first one. Uh, you need to be aware of the different types of functions and uh, being able to identify the function looking at the graph. Um, so the first one here is linear function, comes from the word line. So basically if you have um, any sort of line, this is a positive sloped line, let's say a negative slope, sloped line, the slope here would be negative, vertical line, horizontal line, basically any line will be a linear function. Now the idea of a function is an input-output table. So if I were to make, um, let's say this is x, this is the process, and this is y, the output. This is what we plug into the function, it's called the input. This is what comes out of the function after doing the process. So for example, let's say, let's say this function I actually looked at this function earlier and I noticed that the formula for this is 2x plus 1. So um, let's have a bunch of inputs here and let's see what happens. Let's say x is negative 2. Let me write this x in a better way. I don't like how it looks. x. So let's say we plug in negative 2 in this function right here, right here as negative 2. So we will go 2 times negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. Let's say we use 0. 0. When we plug in 0 in the function, 2 times 2 times 0 plus 1, that will be 0 plus 1, which is just a 1. Let's say we plug in 2. 2 times 2 plus 1, that's 4 plus 1, which is 5. So what points do we have? Are, um, some of the points we got here are negative 2 comma negative 3 from there, 0, 1, <coughs> 2, 5, and if you plot these, then you end up with this line. And that's the idea of a linear function. The next function which you all discussed and uh, worked on is this shape. The name of the shape is, um, let me think about the name of the shape and see if you can come up with it on your own. It starts with P. And name th another name for this function is quadratic function. I don't think you um, they use the word square function a lot. It's quadratic function. And the name of this shape, if it hasn't occurred to you yet, is parabola. And the exact same idea as our linear functions, because all functions have the exact same idea, we are talking about an input-output table. X, Y, and the process, like how we did here, the whole process deal. If you plug in a bunch of numbers, let's say I plug in 1. Uh, by the way, this is the formula, Y equals X squared. You plug in 1 for X, 1 squared is 1, plug in 2, 2 squared is 4. 4, plug in 3, 9, and so on and so forth, and you can see 1, comma 1 is right here, 2, if you, if you look at 2, uh, the value for that is 4, which you can see is 4, and so on and so forth, and also in the negative direction. The third function that you had touched upon was the cube function, and the equation for that is y equals x to the third, or as they have said, f of x equals x to the third, which again basically means if we start plugging in x's as different numbers, let's say I plug in negative 2, I'm basically now looking at cubing the negative 2, which basically means, let me try and do the, introduce the process column as well. So we are looking at negative 2 cubed. Now negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 would be negative 8. So neg at negative 2, which is right here, the value of the function will be way down here somewhere, negative 8. When we plug in negative 1, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 
and hence this right here. When we are at negative 1, the value of the function is also negative 1, and so on and so forth. And we can generate all these points, and that's what a cube function is. Then came about the square root function, y equals square root of x. Pretty self-explanatory. You take x and then square root that number. Now, I'm not going to pick any number. I'm only going to pick numbers that can be square rooted in my head. So, for example, 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. And if you notice, I didn't pick 5, 6, 7, or 8, because if I try to square root 5, the answer is going to be a long decimal number. I'm not going to be able to plot that. Um, so here it is. If you look at 4, square root of 4 right here is 2. Square root of 9 is a nice 3, as you can see, and so on and so forth. So that's our square root function. Absolute value function is written like that, or y equals absolute value of x. It's basically mirror image on each side. And what that absolute does, if you um, can't remember what absolute does, if I take absolute and let's say I put in um, 5 here, now the absolute value of 5 is 5. Because this is the absolute value function basically asks us that, hey, what's the distance of that number from 0? So what's the distance of 5 from 0? It's 5. But on the other hand, if I give you negative 5, now what's the distance of negative 5 from 0? Well, the distance of negative 5 on a number line from 0, the distance, is still 5. So this is still 5. So absolute value, the answers to those aren't negative. And that's why if we plug in negative 2, the answer is still positive 2. If we plug in negative 3, the answer will be 3, because that's the distance. And hence, this, this shape is referred to as the absolute value shape. Reciprocal functions, uh, they're pretty cool. I mean, if you look at this graph, it's actually broken at this point. And this is called an asymptote, and we have an entire unit dedicated to what asymptotes are, how to find them, and all that stuff. But for now, keep in mind, reciprocal function basically looked like that. Now, they may move, and that's a whole another topic, which is transformations. Um, but we are talking about parent functions, and parent functions are about the origin. Log functions, we're going to discuss log functions as well. There's a unit dedicated to that in pre-cal as well, but I'm pretty sure you've touched based on it in Algebra 2. So this is the shape of log functions. Log functions, which is, um, of course, number 7, and then exponential functions, which is number 8. These are <coughs> inverses of each other, and then we, we will study about them more as well. But for now, if you keep in mind, log functions, is, this is the shape, and then exponential, if you notice, is completely the other way around. They are reflections of each other. If if I were to tell you something about them real quick, pretend there's a mirror along this line. <clears throat> so if I were to have a function that looks like, that looks, let me use a different color. Let's say, let's say there's a function that looks like that. Now remember, this red dotted line is a mirror. So if I were to reflect this green function about that mirror, this would automatically come about somewhere here. Whoa, that's thick. That's okay. Right? See, the pink and the green, they're a reflection of each other about the red dotted line. And that's what exponential and logs do. So if this is the log function, let's do thick. Let's use a different color. Let's use white and that. So if this, this one, the green one, let's say if this is the log function, then this pink one automatically will be exponential function. Exponential function. They're mirror images of each other. That's, that's 7 and 8. All right. Moving on to 9 and 10, we b briefly discussed these two as well in... I think it's unit 1, but somewhere along the lines you will see this function. They're pretty cool, um, and you can see they're like steps, right? Just like you could jump from one, one step to the other. You can jump from one step to the other. <clears throat> this is called the floor function. 
This one's called the ceiling function. And if you notice, the only difference is that this one starts with a filled in solid dot, ends at an empty dot, and then jumps up like a staircase. This one, on the other hand, has um, an empty circle to begin with and then ends at the solid dot. That's the only function difference between the two. But we're not going to be discussing these two like separately in this uh, um, course, but we will talk about this function together as a whole. It wouldn't matter if the empty hole comes before the solid or not. And the last three functions, 11, 12, and 13. This is all trigonometry. We have the giant um, lessons dedicated to sine, cosine function. If you notice, sine and cosine, they're both waves. Um, they look the exact same, the yellow graph and the green graph right here. The shape is the exact same, the width, um, the height of the the height of the wave, if you look at the height of the wave here, about the same. Everything about them is the same. Also, these numbers down here, pi over 2, pi, all this, we will learn how to read these. Um, they are also at the same distance. The only difference between these two graphs is the placement of the wave. So, placement, I'm going to write it here, of the wave. That's the only difference between these two. One is slight shift of the other, and that's it. We will discuss that more. But for now, please keep in mind, waves is either sine function or cosine function. You're not going to be asked these in today's homework. So I just wanted to put it there to give you a quick glimpse of it. And this is tangent function. Uh, the word tangent, um, you must have heard about that word back in geometry where we had circles and a tangent was a line that touches this. Oops, no, that's not good. A tangent is a line that touches the circle at one point and then moves on. This used to be the tangent, but this is not that tangent. So I'm going to erase that. But um, these are the shapes. These are all broken pieces. They're, they're separate from each other. They do not connect. They do not um, intersect. They do not cross each other. And again, these dotted lines are basically breaks in the graph, and we will discuss them. They're called uh, vertical. Let me write it here. What are they called? These are called vertical. I have some totes. T O T E S. Fancy word. All right. <clears throat> so this is a quick glimpse, and I think this should be it to get you through homework today. We generally do not make this a separate course, a separate lesson. Um, but because of the virtual setting, we are attempting to just get you started with something. That's a review from previous courses. All right.